are watching the series in molecular phylogenetics and today we are going to talk about the steps in phylogenetic analysis so this is the flow chart of the steps we use to construct a phylogenetic tree and perform phylogenetic analysis we first select the organisms or a gene family then we choose appropriate molecular markers to amplify sequence and assemble finally we align them and prepare an evolutionary model we perform the phylogenetic analysis and construct the phylogenetic tree and finally we evaluate the phylogenetic tree so it is a combination of the experiments we do in the lab and we do in silico so both of these are combined so that we can perform the phylogenetic uh, analysis in the most robust manner possible first is selection we select the organism or gene family identify a protein or dna sequence of interest and assemble a data set consisting of other related sequences the decision to use nucleotide or protein sequences depends on the properties of the sequences and the purposes of the study so it is dependent on the user who is doing who is performing the experiment second is choice of molecular markers the choice of molecular markers is critical in analyzing the gene sequences which are unknown to us so molecular markers are tend to be linked with those gene sequences and that is why we use them and then amplify them and finally get the uh, desired results so uh, when we have very closely related organisms then rapidly evolving nucleotide sequences are used and when we have widely divergent group of organisms we we usually use slowly evolving nucleotide sequences such as ribosomal rna or protein sequences then is alignment of data set we make a multiple alignment from base alignment or amino acid sequence by using certain tools like muscle blast or other methods the software used are tea coffee and jalview they can actually use for multiple sequence alignment incorrect alignment leads to systematic error in phylal tree so alignment has to be done in a very robust manner and that can be done when we use uh, certain softwares like jalview or tea coffee So this is what an alignment looks like. This is from Jalview. It gives uh, an idea about the conservation, quality, consensus, occupancy, and this is how how the sequences look like. Now there is a concept of homoplasy. The proportion of substitution defines the observed distance between the two sequences. So we know that substitutions are very common in nucleotide sequences. So the proportion of substitution actually tells the observed distance between the two sequences that how much uh substitutions have taken place to come to this uh nucleotide. I'll just make this clear in the next slide. However, observed substitutions not always represent true evolutionary events. So, for example, for a mutation A to C actually something like this could have happened that first a would have substituted with t then g then c such multiple substitutions and convergence at individual positions obscure the estimation of true evolutionary distances between sequences this effect is known as homoplasy so the so homoplasy may persist when we are, when you are constructing a phylogenetic tree but it can be reduced with the help of certain methods next is choosing substitution model homoplasy if not corrected could generate incorrect trees so what we can do to correct them hence we use statistical models called substitution models or evolutionary models most commonly used models are jukes cantor model and kimura model these are the two substitution models which we use to prevent the effect of homoplasy first is jukes cantor model it is the simplest substitution model assumes that all nucleotides substitute substitute with equal probability formula for deriving evolutionary distances in this case is dab that is distance equals minus 3 by 4 natural log 1 minus 4 by 3 pab where dab is the evolutionary distance pab is is the observed sequence distance so if we have this example here we have two sequences here sequence a and b have to they are 20 nucleotides long Eight pairs are different, which are marked in yellow. Sequence differ by forty percent. Therefore, observed sequence distance is zero point four zero. So PAB is zero point four zero. 
then we can calculate the evolutionary distance by the formula which was provided before this is how we can calculate the evolutionary distance so if we have five sequences designated by a b c d and e then we will calculate the distances between pair of sequences and create a distance matrix so this is how we calculate the distances between two sequences each and then we prepare a distance matrix like this next type of substitution model is kimura model it is a sophisticated model and it assumes mutation rates for transition and transversion to be different formula for deriving evolutionary distances is dab equals minus half natural log 1 minus 2 pti minus ptv minus half natural log 1 minus 2 ptv where dab is the evolutionary distance pti is the observed frequency for for transition and ptv is the observed frequency for transversion let's come to the example again we had two sequences where eight pairs were different so total difference was 40% but here transition and transversion are calculated separately i hope you remember what transitions and transversions are transitions is when purines are substituted by purines and transversions are when purines are substituted by pyrimidines so here 30% is transition and 40% is uh, sorry 10% is transversion so pti will be 0.30 ptv will be 0.10 we can calculate dab which will be 0.66 so this is how we can calculate uh, the distances the evolutionary distance between two pair, two sequences and we can again prepare a distance matrix and process further in the evolutionary tree analysis and construction Next is building or estimating the phylogenetic trees. The most common methods applied include distance based methods and character based methods. So there are two types of methods we can use to construct a phylogenetic tree. The software and packages used for this are pop, pamel, phylip etc. Sixth is ev evaluating the trees that is reliability. How much reliable the tree we have formed is. So after construction of phylogenetic tree next step is to statistically evaluate the reliability of the inferred phylogeny There occurs a need to assess and initiate confidence in the phylogenetic tree constructed and there are certain methods for that which we will study later We need to determine the most accurate illustration of the evolutionary relationship among the given sequences So this was a brief info on the steps involved in phylogenetic analysis Thank you. Next we have a video on distance based methods. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe and share. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and for any queries or suggestions, please write to us at the given email address. Thank you.